Hi guys, uh, so welcome to the second video of this Spring Boot series. So in the last video we discussed about relaxed binding, which is better properties or YAML and why do we need Spring profiles. So we discussed these topics in the last video. So today in this video we discuss the topics related to the scheduling in the Spring Boot. So mainly the questions can be asked by the interviewer like what is difference between fixed delay and fixed rate, right? And also the questions related to cron expressions can be asked. So in today's video, we will discuss about overall how scheduling works in Spring Boot for these two concepts so that if these questions are asked to you, so you can give a proper answers. So let's start. So what I have did is I have created one file scheduled task example. And here what I have used configuration annotation and then I have used enable scheduling annotation. So this annotation is very important without this, even if you have scheduled method inside, but if you miss to give this annotation, right, your scheduler will not run. So that's why you have to be very careful uh, while writing the scheduled methods because you might miss this and it will not run, right? So first thing you can always tell to your interviewer, like if we need to have schedulers in our Spring Boot. This annotation is very important, which is known as enable scheduling. And here I'm simply creating one uh, function. So public void uh, schedule task fixed delay. So if you see here, we are using here fixed delay is equal to 1000 millisecond. So which is equal to one second, right? So what I am saying is I want to run this method. So you can put any logic, right? In production, uh, you might want to send some logs every second or you might want to send logs every hour to other system or you want to you know send some data every hour or every day to other systems so there are a lot of production use cases so there are a lot of schedulers uh, so myself also i have worked on a lot of schedulers because most of the production applications you want to you know combine the data and send the data to other systems at fixed interval or maybe in over the weekends also and everyday batch also right so there are a lot of use cases in production that's why these schedulers if you're working on any uh, production application uh, so you have to use the uh, scheduled methods there for any use case so there are a lot of use cases so in this case what i'm saying is fixed delay is one second so it should run every one second right just for this example but in production it can be one hour 30 minutes or anything so now the same method i've created is with the fixed rate of one second, right? So interviewer might ask you like this all looks same, right? Only difference is fixed delay and fixed rate, right? So fixed delay you want to use when you want to track the previous execution also, and you don't want to run this logic in multiple threads. So what I mean is like, let's say the first instance run with the fixed delay, right? But this task took two, two seconds. So this fixed delay will start after the task is finished. So if I say here, so what I mean by that is, let's say task A started, it started at let's say 10th second and it took five seconds, right? So that means it got finished at 15th second, right? So task B will start after 15th plus whatever the parameter is there of fixed delay, in this case one, right? So it will start at 16th second, not at 11th second, right? Because 10th second was the start of the task A, 15th second was end of task A. So task B will start 15 plus whatever fixed delay is there. So with the help of fixed delay, right? There will be never a case two threads are running it in parallel, okay? So that's why you want to use the fixed delay in the scenarios let's say you are processing some customer data, right? And you don't want to process or start a new instance of a scheduler until the previous instance, instance is working, right? So that's how you can work with fixed delay, but with the fixed rate, right? Fixed rate will not track your previous executions. So in this case, if I take a same example here, so what will happen is task A, so task B will start at 11 second, right? And task uh, C will start at 12th. So that means task B doesn't care about if task A is still executing or not. It will simply use this parameter and run this logic after every one second. Okay, so this is main difference between fixed delay and fixed rate. 
and for fixed rate you can use the this fixed rate like if i have to push some logs or where i have to push you know some other files and it doesn't matter if previous instance is running right so in that case you can use fixed rate okay so now if i will run this right so let's run so i will say maven spring boot run so you will see the both task will work right so fixed rate is working fixed delay is working fixed rate fixed delay right so now let's take an example of fixed rate right so we we said that and this is very important concept so let's say if i put here thread dot sleep right and i put 3 seconds and i will just put a try catch uh, exception handler here so now according to our logical or theoretical explanation right so task a will run let's say 10 second it will take 3 second because we have put thread dot sleep right and then it will finish at 13 second but other task should run after 11 after 1 second each right but it will not happen by default so if i will show you this and let me comment this one or let me increase the time right so we can see the example of a uh, fixed rate whether it is running every second or it is waiting because of the thread dot slip so you will see here so fixed delay task fixed rate task work 780 right but it didn't work at 781 it next instance executed at 83 86 86 so that means it is still waiting right this is happening because spring boot by default use only one thread okay so that's why there is no more thread so that's why we have to use one more annotation here which is known as async annotation so that's what you can tell to your interviewer also which will give a really good expression so now if i will run the same right uh, program uh, so you will see it's not waiting for this uh, task so it will immediately run after every 10 11 12 13 14 14 even if each task is taking 3 second it doesn't care so with the help of async you can really achieve that behavior of fixed rate so this is how it works uh, so now what is the second question is related to cron expressions right because if you will see here most of the times like in production use cases you have to specify like date also a day also like if you want to run like only on weekends or you want to run multiple instances right so all that scenarios can't be handled with fixed delay and fixed rate right uh, so in that case you really need to use cron expression so in cron expression we have if you see the six uh, attributes here right so what does that mean is first one is seconds second one is minutes third one is hours this one is day of month this is month and this is day of week right the star means the all instance so that means this task will run on all days and on all months right and question marks mean any day of week right so that's how it works so that means this method will run every day at 9 53 pm so if i will see my current time right it's 3 10 pm right uh, so i will say 15 and i will say here 11 right so that means if i will run this program it should run now this task so that's what this cron expression means so if you see our fixed delay task ran our fixed rate task is running every second for this example and as soon as the 311 will come right uh, in some seconds this method will be picked up and it will run so if you see here the cron task right so as soon as it's 311 pm here the cron task ran so that's how you can use cron expression so a lot of cron expression generators so i'm using java news slash cron so because it will tell me the last execution and next execution also so if you see here uh like at 15 11 it should run every day so if you see 19th 20th so now let's try to change some parameters so start, this is our day of month right and this is our month so let's say if i want only to run my batch let's say in december right uh, just an example so what will happen here is so this batch will run at 15 11 in december month right so that's how it works so if you see here the next execution will start from the 1st december so and also you can change let's say if i will say not and in december if you only want to run you know on weekend let's say just an example so i can say here saturday sunday saturday sunday here then you have to change this to any so now if you will see it will run in december every day 
between Saturday and Sunday, right? So that's how you can do. So if I will say here star, so that means it will run every day all year between Saturday and Sunday on this. And if you want to give specific second, you can play with it. And there are a lot of scenarios. Basically, you can play with these six attributes and create your own Chrome expression, whatever use case. So mostly in production, the use case can be product uh, on weekend you want to run or use case can be specific month also like based on holidays and all you can use zone also because in some of the production scenario you want time zone like mst or something right so you can use zone also and then you can also fetch this chrome expression from application.config right in the last uh, video we discussed about environment variables so you can do that with the chrome expression instead of hard coding here you can directly you know fetch from the application file and so that it will be easier for you to change in the future right so you can always uh, mention it in the application file so here if you see i have mentioned it here so it will pick it from here and run it and in the future if you want to change uh, you can change it just here and it will be changed in all the places wherever you are uh, passing the prone dot expression so that's it for this video so if you found this video helpful don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell icon for more programming content